I've been getting a lot of feedback from followers after sending out my video on the CARES Act, showing us the opportunity that we have to take money from our airline's 401k and then using it to invest in real estate or any other opportunities that you see. Got a lot of questions and concerns about if we're eligible for it and the exact process of how to do it. So today I've got my tax professional CPA, John Harton with me, who's gonna explain the unprecedented opportunity that the CARES Act gives us to invest in real estate, any other opportunities that we see so we can multiply and can take control of our retirement. John, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, I am a CPA. I've been uh, working in public accounting for about 23 years now. Went to Metro State uh, College and got a master's degree in taxation from Denver University and been specializing in real estate for most of my career, uh, probably over 15 years. Yeah, you, your firm is Kingdom Tax Group? Yes, Kingdom Tax Group. The firm name is new. But like I said, I've been having my, I've had my own firm since I've, since 2014. So first, can you clarify the conditions that an airline pilot would need to meet in order to request a CARES Act or coronavirus distribution from our 401k? They would have to basically show that they were impacted by the coronavirus in some fashion or another, financially, or their hours were cut back, uh, things like that. They had some sort of impact that they could borrow money from their 401k and then um, and use that for survival purposes or however they need to use it. They would need to include this income in, or this, this distribution, uh, and hear me out here, because you need to include it. You can do it rateably over three years, okay? So a little bit this year, a little bit next year, a little bit the year after that. Uh, but then you can also pay it back. Now, if you pay it back, uh, it's treated as a trustee to trustee rollover, but you have to go back and amend your three years returns where you included the income in the first place. The CARES Act specifies that if we take a coronavirus related distribution, we can recontribute it into any eligible retirement plan. Yes. So does that mean with myself as a corporate, with a corporate 401k, can I take that distribution and recontribute it to like a self-directed IRA and thus invest it in real estate? Uh, yes, you can. As long as everything remains the same, it has to be your, in your name. And, um, but that's basically the, the, the gist of it is it has to be in your name. So th that, that, component of it has to stay the same. It can't be your wife's or your brother's or anything like that. It has to be yours. All right. Fantastic. So that'd be a huge opportunity then for them to multiply their retirement. So if any of our followers go through with the distribution and then recontribution to a self-directed plan, would there be any penalties or additional taxes that they'd be no. subjected to? No, there's no penalties for early withdrawal. You might be able to just simply also roll it over as long as it's a qualified plan that you're going into, um, but no penalties as long as you're following the, the CARES guidelines, which are, again, you include it in your income rate of over three years. You can also elect to do it all in one year if you like. And then if you do put it into another IRA, self-directed IRA or other qualified plan, you can go back and amend those, um, those returns for where you included the income. Fantastic. So it sounds like this, we can roll the, do a regular indirect rollover for no penalty. Mm -hmm. So how is it different than previous indirect rollovers? Well, uh, if you took money out um, for um, prematurely, you, you would have a penalty. But what this does is that this, the, the CARES Act is a lot more geared toward borrowing money from your 401k. And what the CARES Act did was it increased the limit that you could borrow and then increased the terms of what you could do with it uh, if you did borrow. Normally, uh, before the CARES Act, if you borrowed money from your 401k, I think the limit was $50,000, uh, you would need to repay it. It was a loan. You were repaying yourself, basically. And if you didn't, then it becomes an early distribution. So it gave a number of significant breaks to um, to borrowing money from your uh, qualified plans. Huge opportunity this year. Wow. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my fellow airline pilots, their 401k is full of employee contributions. Mm -hmm. So if we utilize this CARES Act indirect rollover, those employer contributions, is that considered pre-tax money? The employer contributions, they would have to be vested in it. It shouldn't make it. The employer contributions would be counted as part of a distribution if they were including it in income. Basically, all that would happen with that. So if, um, if they wanted, for instance, to put it into a Roth account, would they necessarily have to convert it? Or would, or would a tech professional like yourself have to look at it and decide if it needs to be converted or not? Uh, you should probably check on the, everybody's circumstances are going to be a little different. So you'd want to check mm -hmm. with a tax professional to make sure, depending on your income level, you might need to do with the, you know, the backdoor Roth, turn it into a, in a traditional IRA and then convert that traditional IRA. A lot of my followers are fairly new to uh, the traditional versus the Roth account. Generally, when do you advise people to 
contribute to a Roth account versus a traditional? Well, Roth IRAs are great if you're going to be in a higher tax bracket in the future. Um, but the bottom line is, is the, the growth and in income in the Roth IRA is going to be tax free upon distribution. So if you're going to be in a higher bracket, then that's where you want to put your money. So basically, you have to decide if you want to retire rich or poor. Yeah, right? basically. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as the money that you invest within the account, uh, can you talk quickly about that? Like, so for instance, if I purchase real estate property with it and that profit, how would the tax be different? The, the effect of everything is the same. It's, it's all contained within the IRA. So currently you wouldn't have any tax effect, you, you, whether it's a Roth or a traditional, your, your self-directed IRA. Mm -hmm. um, if it all, it all becomes taxable or not taxable upon distribution, whatever happens between those years, that's what happens. You have gains, losses, just like any other kind of account. So when you're investing in real estate, you would have you know, gains and losses on the sales of property, or you might have a rental property that's going to earn income on a regular basis. Um, and so everything that happens within that IRA is going to be um, tax deferred until you withdraw it, unless it's a Roth. And if so, if it's a Roth, then all those profits are, have never been taxed. Right. Well, that's huge. So this sounds like a great way for an airline pilot who wants to start investing in real estate to quickly take advantage of up to $100,000 in their 401k and use that for any opportunity they see now uh, before the before the end of the year when the, when the CARES Act was expires and we might not have this opportunity again. But overall, it sounds like it'd be a huge advantage to have a tax professional, professional like yourself to be on their team. To any transaction, you can guide them through, make sure that they're getting the best tax advantage possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, the tax professionals, that's, that's, that's what we do. You know, we, we keep up to date with the tax laws. We've been down a number of different roads. We've seen a number of different scenarios. We know what works best. I mean, even the type of entity you select for a given business could have a huge impact on what you're doing. So um, before any decisions are made, it's best to talk with a, with a tax professional to kind of see what the impact are going to be, you know, impacts you impact of that transaction is going to be. Uh, I've seen many people make mistakes because they didn't even, they didn't just didn't bother to pick up the phone and call. And they ended up with a lot of taxable income that they weren't expecting because they just didn't plan properly. Uh, so yeah, I would highly recommend using a tax professional if you're going to go down these roads of, of real estate investments uh, or almost anything, anything that's life-changing. Yeah, that's huge. So most people, when they think about starting an entity, they think, Oh, I'm going to go an attorney because I want asset protection. But really, mm -hmm. it goes both ways. It's tax and asset protection. It sounds like. Uh, yeah, it does. And there are some there are some CPAs that can help you and kind of guide you a bit with asset protection. Uh, most will not write up partnership agreements and things like that. Most won't do that. That's a lot of legal stuff that you, you you'd want a lawyer to handle. The one thing I would caution you on is any lawyer who says, well, you need to have six different entities and this one needs to own part of that. And this one needs to own part of that. Generally speaking, if you have a separate entity like an LLC or an S corporation, uh, you have a, a good um, liability insurance policy um, and you maintain your records separately from other entities and separately from yourself, you'll be in pretty good shape. Now, if you're running a high risk type of business of some sort, uh, you would want to talk to an attorney or an insurance agent about covering your risk with regard to that. A lot of this can be done with a CPA and um, a decent CPA will tell you that's beyond my scope of, of uh, advice. I would you know, then, then send you to an attorney. Now, but definitely you want to put yourself with a team of professionals around you that you can rely on. You guys fly planes. These people do law and taxes and accounting. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people these days, they go on the internet, they see an article and they, oh, I could do my own taxes because I see the law there. But it's a lot mm -hmm. more to it than that. I mean, obviously with your education and your licensing, that yeah. all goes for the advantage of people like us, especially the high uh, income earning producers. Right. And, and one other thing I want to mention about stuff you find on the internet, if you find an article on the internet and read it and go, wow, that's great. That's fantastic. Make sure you look at the date it was written. Mm -hmm. Because if something was written back in 2002, I guarantee you the tax laws have changed <laughs> that might not be applicable anymore. You yeah. Know? yeah, I didn't think about that. Okay, so a lot of my airline pilot followers, they're not in the state of Colorado. So if they mm -hmm. were to add you to their, their team, would that make a difference, the fact that you're out of state? No, no, not at all. I've, I've done tax returns for probably half of the states in the country. There's, there's a few states that I like more than others, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've done California, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, obviously Colorado. I think there's about five states that don't have taxes. And so I've done probably 20 to 25 different states, depending on where my clients are. And uh, if one of our followers wants to add you to their team, how would they get in contact with you? Uh, the best way to reach me is through email. Uh, John at kingdomtaxgroup.com. Uh, and it's J-O-H-N uh, at kingdomtaxgroup.com. That's usually the best way to reach me. Excellent. Thanks so much, John. So 
one thing we can get out of this, well, actually two things. Number one, you only have two months left to take advantage of this huge opportunity to get access to your own capital now. And number two, how critical it is to get a tax professional on your team. Now, I brought John on today because John and I have been working for a while, so he understands the aviation industry, how pilots get paid, because it is different from most others. He's already familiar a bit, all of our advantages. So that's why I brought John on here, because I think he'd be a great asset to your team. He's already well adverse in the CARES Act, as you can see. So again, if you want John on your team, it's kingdomtaxgroup.com. And of course, if you want to speak to me, book a call with me at layovermoney.com.